wants to know what the domain is for its continuity, and there are its choices, and because there are no holes or anything in that, it's going to be continuous from negative infinity to infinity. Number two, same thing. Notice there's a jump, this continuity at x equals two. So on our choices, it's gonna be this one here from negative infinity to two. See how it's at two, not the opposite. It's from negative infinity to two, coming all the way along the x values. And then there's this jump, and then it picks up again at two again, to infinity. Y equals x cubed is going to be choice D. And its range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. This is x equals y squared, y equals x cubed, square root x, and this is called the step function. Number four, find f of one, negative one for the function. Well, negative one is less than or equal to negative one. Negative one is not greater than negative one. So I'm gonna plug negative one into the top five x. So five times negative one is negative five. Y equals two, y equals negative x minus five. Y equals two, so that's a horizontal line, that's a hoi, that's y equals two, a hoi, when it's greater than one. So it can't be a, it can be b, it can't be c because notice there's an open circle there. But over here, it's a closed circle. Uh, greater than or equal to means it's going to be a closed circle on that. And it can't be this one because it's not going from 1 to the right. It has to be choice D. And we can also verify that. That's negative x minus 5. It begins at negative 5 and goes down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. But it has to be to the left of 1. This is going to be opposite same. So it goes right to up 5. 2 units to the right and 5 units up. Opposite same. Right to up 5. It went right three. So it's gonna be opposite. So the one that goes right three is actually gonna be D, because it's the opposite inside. Notice it did not go up any, so there's not gonna be anything after those parentheses. Four absolute value of X, absolute value is a V and it's negative, so it's gonna be pointy, like a V. And notice it's negative four, so that means it's gonna go down four over one, it's gonna be choice D. Choice C goes down one over four. Choice D is not reflected over the X axis because it has to be flipped upside down with that negative out in front of it. Two square root X, two square root X, square root X goes up and to the right. So it has to be choice D. These have negatives inside or outside of the, the radical in order to get it to flip around like that. F of x plus 8. Um, y equals f of x plus 8. So that's going to be adding 8 to the y value. That's all that means. I add 8 to the y value. So when I add 8 to this y value, that's going to be 4 plus 8 is 12. The x value stays. If they wanted me to do something to the x value, it would be operated inside these little parentheses. So I'm going to add 8 to the y value, and that's going to give me 2 comma 12. 9, 6, and it's flipped over the x-axis. So there's 9, 6, and it's flipped over the x-axis. That's 9, 6, and that's flipped over the y-axis. That's rotated, and that's rotated. <clears throat> that's got a stretch of 2, vertical stretch of 2, and it goes down 3 units. It is an even function, so that means it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. Odd exponent, x to the first is an odd component. Odd exponent, so that's going to be an odd function. That's a square, it goes right five down three. That one goes right five up three. That one goes right five down three. That one goes left five up three. That one goes left five down three. That's the choice D. This one is a cube, so it's gonna have that shape, and it goes left four. It's inside the uh, parentheses, so it's opposite. It goes left four. That went up, that one went down, this one went left. Left six, up six. It went left six, down six. This one went right six, up six. This one went left six, up six. It has to be choice C. Notice it's not a parabola, it's a turning point though. It has what's called a turning point. Absolute value of x plus four. That means it doesn't go right or left, but it does go up four. This absolute value went down four. It can't be that one. This one went left four. It can't be that one. This one went up four. This one went right four. It has to be choice C. Skinny V shifted down four. Skinny V shifted right four. Skinny V flipped over the x-axis and up is not B. It is not C. It has to be choice D. It's down four units and it's skinny. All right, what I want to do is plug the four into both of them. It wants me to evaluate f minus g of four. I can subtract these and then throw in the four, or I can throw in the four right now. So if I throw the four into f, that's going to be five times four squared minus five. And this is just going to be a four in there, so it's going to be four plus six. So that's going to be 16. Five times 16 is 80 minus five. So it's going to equal 75 for this. And four plus six is 10. So it's going to be 75 minus 10, and that would give me 65. And notice it's choice B. Number 20. This time they want me to multiply. 
Now a 20, they want me to multiply them. So what I'm going to do is set up a punnet. So 8x plus 7 times 2x plus 8. That's going to give me 16x squared. 64x, 14x, and that's 56. Combine my terms, 16x squared, 14 plus 64. 78 plus 56. 16x squared plus 78x plus 56, just like the Punnett square provided. Number 21. Find the domain of that time machine. So when I multiply these, it's not that big of a deal. It's just basically going to be this times negative 3x minus 5 over 1. F of x times g of x. So when I do that, it's top times top. That's going to give me negative 6x minus 10 over x minus 11 times 1, which is just x minus 11. And now it wants to know the domain. The domain is going to be everything but 11. You set the bottom equal to 0, and when it equals 0, that limits or restricts the domain. So that's everything but 11. When it's everything but 11, it's going to look like this. 11, 11. Negative infinity up to 11, 11 to positive infinity. Number 21. Let's see one. And remember, it was 11. The opposite of that, not the same. So negative infinity to 11, union 11 to infinity. Number 22. Now, this is a fog. That means I take 5 and plug it into G. Then I take that number and I plug it into F. So when I take 5 and I plug it into G, I need to figure out what that is evaluated at X. So to evaluate fog, or 5, I have to take that 5 and put it in what's closest to it first. Not the F, I have to put it in the G. So that's going to give me negative 2 times 5 squared, minus 2 times 5, minus 3. That's 25, that's negative 50, minus 10, minus 3. Negative 63. Now I take that negative 63 and I throw it up into F. So it's going to be F of negative 63. I have to take that negative 63 and throw it into that. So it equals negative 2 times negative 63, minus 2. Well, I believe negative times negative is positive, so that's going to be 2 times 63 is 126, minus 2. Well, that should equal 124, the number 22. And there it is. Number 23. This time it's a Goff, but no number. So I actually have to do all the meticulous out of 23. It's a Goff. That means I take this F value, and I plug this whole quantity in for X in G. So it's going to give me 6 times something plus 4. And the something is negative 2X plus 4. Do my distributive, negative 12X. Plus 24, plus 4, that's going to give me negative 12x, plus 28. 27. For number 24, I can solve this one totally in the calculator. We're going to type in mode 5, 1. Mode 5, 1. And now all I have to do is type in the coefficients. I'm going to type in 2. Hit the equal sign, it moves over. I'm going to type in 7. Hit the equal sign, it moves over. I'm going to type in 59. Notice it has to be equal, that constant. It can't be set over there. It has to be in the right order. Hit equals, and notice it slides from there over there, waiting for my negative 3. Hit equals. The leading coefficient for that is 1. Hit equals. 15. Hit equals, and it will give me the coordinate of negative 2, 9. And they want it in coordinate form. Negative 2, 9. Remember, you have to type it the way they ask for it, otherwise the computer will mark it wrong. Another one, but notice it is not in the proper format. If you just type it in like it looks, it will mark it wrong. I have to rewrite both of these and stand. I have to do a little algebra before I can use the calculator. So for this first one, I'm going to subtract the 8y from both sides. And that's going to give me negative 2x minus 8y equals 14. Okay, thank you. Now this one, it's already got the x and y on the right side, so I'm just going to flip-flop it all around the, the equal sign. So the negative 4x will come first, plus 5y equals negative 14. Now I'm going to use mode 5, 1. And let the technology take it away. Mode 5, 1. And now I just type in the coefficients of negative 2, negative 8, 14. Negative 4, 5, and negative 14. 1, negative 2. The 1 in coordinate form. 1, negative 2. Not two. Number 26, once again, is another system of equations. It wants to order pair. Notice it is already in perfect format. X, Y equals a number. X, Y equals a number. We can go right to mode 5, 1 for this. And let the technology take control. So I'm in mode 5, 1, and I want to hit the coefficients. The coefficients are 6 equals 5 equals 10 equals 12 equals negative 4 equals and 76 equals. It will give you the X value and the Y value. 5, negative 4. They want it as a coordinate. So the answer would be 5, comma, negative 4 as a coordinate. Number 27. This one I have to rearrange. It's going to be 3, negative 7, negative 50. 7, 3, positive 38 when I type it in because I have to get this 50 to the right side of that equal sign. I have to get this negative 38 to the right side. Notice, I moved that negative 50 over there. This is the format that we're going to use mode 5, 1. Now my coefficients are in the right place. I can use the technology. And my coefficients are going to be 3. I hit the equal sign, negative 7. Hit the equal sign, negative 50. It would give me a wrong answer if I left it in 50 on the left side of the equal sign. 7 equals 3 equals 38. Equals, equals, it will give you the coordinate. 2, 8. And that's the format it wants. 2, comma, 8. 
number 28. This here's a little bit more of an involved format. It's in correct order, so I'm going to load 5 on it, and then look at the answer and see what I want to do. Again, it's a system. I'm going to go right to mode 5 1 and enter in the coefficients. And it's going to give me 32 equals, it moves over, negative 8 equals, it moves over, 56 equals, moves over to the left and down, negative 4 equals 1. The coefficient in front of this y is a 1. And then 7. No solution. That's my answer. No solution. And over here for my choices, that would be the empty set. Now the next one is probably going to be infinite solutions, and we have to do something tricky with one of these in order to answer it correctly. Number 29. Notice again. It's already in the correct format, but we're going to mode 5 1 it and see which one it is. One solution would be an ordered pair. Ordered pair. Ordered pair. No solution would be the empty set. Infinite solution is going to force our hand to do it. Again, I'm going to go right to mode 5 1 and type in those coefficients. I'm going to type in 2 equals, negative 3 equals, 5 equals, negative 4 equals, oops, 6 equals, and negative 10 equals. Infinite solutions. Now, in order to get this right, we have to come over here and say it's infinite solutions. Now, it wants us to solve it using y. So it's going to be an ordered pair, and the back end is going to be the y value. But up here, I have to solve one of these for x, because that's the x value and that's the y value. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to solve it for x. So 2x minus 3y equals 5. I'm going to add 3y to both sides. That's going to give me 5 plus 3y on the right and 2x on the left. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So the x value equals that. I'm going to take that in. 5 plus 3y over 2. So there's my x value because x equals that and there's my y value. And that's how they want us to solve an infinite solution problem with the systems of equations. This one looks really daunting. It is not. 30 is a large system of equations. This one can be solved using the technology mode 5, 2. And notice it gives me that big array. And all I have to do is enter in the coefficients again. So the top line of coefficients is going to be 1 equals 1 equals 1 equals negative 5. This is a 1 leading coefficient, a 1 leading coefficient in front of the y, and a 1 leading coefficient in front of z, and negative 5 is on the right side. As soon as I hit equals on that negative 5, notice it slides down here for my next row of coefficients. This is going to be 2, 1, negative 1, and negative 3. 2 equals, 1 equals, negative 1 equals, and negative 3 equals. Slides down. The next coefficients are going to be 1, negative 1, 1, and negative 9. 1 equals, negative 1 equals, 1 equals, negative 9 equals. And it gives me three numbers, x, y, and z. x equals negative 4, y equals 2, z equals negative 3. Again, that was negative 4. And negative 3. All done on the calculator. Number 32, another one. Mode 531, another large system of equations, three equations, three variables. Again, I'm going to mode 5 to it. Mode 5 2, it gives me the large array again. I'm just going to type in those coefficients like they look. 1 equals, 1 equals, 1 equals, 6 equals, 1 equals, 1 equals, 1 equals, 6 equals. And the next row is 2, 5, 2, 18. 2 equals, 5 equals, 2 equals, 18 equals. Next row is going to be negative over 1, negative 1 equals, 9 equals, negative 3 equals, and 12 equals. It will give me an ordered trio, not an ordered pair. 3, 2, and 1. 3, 2, and 1. 3, 2, 1. And that's my answer.